with us this morning is Congressman Joe Sestak. Always a pleasure to have you on, sir. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. And thanks for having me back. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure. Our pleasure. Uh, I, I, I got to come right away to an endorsement you picked up yesterday. Uh, Congressman Barney Frank came out yesterday and endorsed you. And I was trying to play the sound this morning. Unfortunately, we're having some problems with our email system here uh, and getting that on. But you were talking yesterday about the don't ask, don't tell policy that the military has. Um, uh, talk a little bit about the endorsement by by Congressman Frank and, and why you why that is a good thing for you. Absolutely. Congressman uh, Frank, right after it became obvious I was going to step into the race against Arlen Specter, I hadn't even announced yet, came up to me and said, look, I want to do anything I can to help you get elected. Arlen Specter's a loyal Republican who remained that, and I think you'd be the best candidate. The thing about him is he then went to the newspaper, said what he told me, then came back and said, I, I really like to help you. You know, there's so few politicians who see make a promise, then follow up on it. He's a gentleman who's pretty independent. You can agree or disagree with him, but he's principled. And he's actually out there because he's working hard for Americans as head of the Financial Services Committee. So I was quite taken. He said, look, I understand President Obama needed the calculation of a 60th vote, but that's a deal that was done in Washington and didn't include him at the table. And he sincerely believes as an individual that I would be the best candidate to carry forward what this nation needs. That's why. I was proud to have them there. You know, everybody seems to want to cut a deal for their own political career. How many politicians do you respect? Because they've stood up against the establishment and said, irregardless of where the chips fall, this is what I'm going to do. And that's why I was proud to have them stand there. Well, let me, let me come back, though, on this principled thing. 1991, Frank and former Representative Joe Kennedy of Massachusetts lobbied for Fannie Mae to soften rules on multifamily home mortgages. Although those dwellings showed a default rate twice that of single-family homes, according to the November 22nd, 1991 Boston Globe. Now, here's a guy who was as much a part of the debacle in the housing in his position as head of the Finance Committee, and yet will not admit any kind of responsibility for that. I don't know if I'd call that principle. Oh, well, principle has to do with integrity. Well, it does. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure you would call President Bush an unprincipled individual, but what? I truly disagreed with his efforts to get 53% with our inspector of tax cuts to the very wealthy. That's a misjudgment. Now, back to Barney. Well, misjudgment, Barney though, is stepping is, up and admitting that you did something wrong then. No, 2005, Barney Frank, as a minority party, with the Republican leader of the House uh, 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 Financial Services Committee, brought to the floor of the House a bill to oversee and place more stringent requirements upon Fannie and Freddie well before uh, the two and a half years later the catastrophe occurred. It got defeated. Then when he became the chairman of the Financial Services Committee, because I voted on that bill two, uh, two years ago, brought forward a bill on his own because the Republican-led bill was defeated by the Republicans. And so, therefore, he brought it together when the Democrats had it, and it passed the House and languored over there, languished over there in the Senate. It's why we need a change in senators. He like told, he well, told. I really do disagree with your premise. Well, no, it's okay. He told the New York Times on September 11th of 2003, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's problems are exaggerated. Now, that's a gross miscalculation some five years later, costing the billions, and he said this exact quote. This is in 2003. These two entities, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, are not facing any kind of financial crisis, unquote. The more people exaggerate these problems, the more pressure there is in these companies, the less we will see in terms of affordable housing, unquote. Now, Absolutely. And he's and come that's back. The value, that's the value of a, of, of a representative, unlike our inspector and President Bush, who voted for that war in Iraq or went to war in Iraq, then our inspector never would change his mind about that war, re-voted for the surge, then he for refused, refused to have oversight of Halliburton. He voted against oversight of those contracts. Barney Frank in 2003 said what you just said, 
that in 2005 with Republicans, when he saw that their changes were being made and he saw some of this stuff, then said, well, wait a moment, we've got a problem here, we need more oversight, and then put oversight on it. So 2003 to 2005, the dynamics changed, and he worked for the Republican Party to bring a wiggle forward, but the Republican leadership refused to buy off on the bill, even though it's, it's the chairman of the Financial Services Committee was a Republican at the time, brought the bill to the floor. So, uh, you know, look, I, uh, it's just like Afghanistan. I believe we should have benchmarks for an exit strategy and measure progress or success. Right. Why? Because it's not that you want to – what you want is to say, well, are we making progress? And if not, it, it then forces you to change your strategy. In war or in business, dynamics change. And are you going to stay the course blindly like uh, our inspector did, voting for every single – economic failed policy of the Bush administration and ran this economy aground, or do you say, well, two years later, well before two years, before the next two years, the catastrophe happened, we need oversight into, we see some harbingers of damage coming. That's what I respect about Arlen. Matter of fact, he stood up yesterday and said, look, when you look way back and see what happened here, you should never have a company like Fannie or Freddie that is part private, part public, that does two things. One, it is trying to you securitize the mortgages on the second mortgage market and are being given subsidies by the government. What he said, the lesson over the last decades learned is break those two apart. So next year he's working on a bill that private corporations will do the secondary market and subsidies should probably be only through FHA. Here's one other th thing, though, and I don't want to spend all day on this one, but, you know, it, because we respect you and we like you, Congress, we like you, Congress, and not like you, like you, uh, this was one other article. Jeff Poor, Business and Media Institute, okay, a year ago. One of Fannie Mae's main defenders in the House represented Barney Frank, Democrat, Massachusetts, a recipient of more than $40,000 in campaign donations from Fannie since 1989, was once romantically involved with a Fannie Mae executive. They get into that as well, and they talk about the media coverage of Frank's uh, coziness with Fannie Mae and his pro Fannie Mae stances has been lacking. Uh, and those are the kind of things. You know, here's 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 why I bring this up. It's it's not necessarily because of you. It's because of the fact that a lot of people respect you as maybe being a new kind of of person in Washington, and yet you seem to go and and embrace the old time insider here who represents the very worst of Washington. It might work for Democrats. I'm not sure it's going to work for people in the general no, election. let me make sure you have got who this work, right. Let me just say, just let me finish what I'm saying, then I'll, I'll throw I'm you sorry, in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. And my point is, will people see Barney Frank in general around the state of Pennsylvania the way maybe uh, the left sees Barney Frank right now? I, again, I, I think you stand for a lot more than that, and I don't think Barney Frank stands for the straightness that you have portrayed here. Let, let me make sure I have this right. We have an allegation here, of which I've never heard of. Obviously. And I'm not sure you heard of it before yesterday's research. Well, actually, and, I have heard of it before, okay. but that's and okay. So you're, you're, you're on top of power. Okay, got an allegation. But don't ever, and I mean this in a, in the, in a way that I like you, is put me in a category when I'm taking on Ed Rendell and the establishment of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Harrisburg, that let a budget sit there and harm. Well, the still isn't finished. State. Wait a moment, just a minute, if you don't mind. I'm taking on the entire Democratic establishment of Washington, D.C., uh, because they cut a backroom deal with somebody who helped run this State of the Union aground, Arlen Specter. No. I am an independent Democrat who believes in principle, integrity, etc. And Barney Frank, in this allegation that you said, in my mind, stands and speaks his mind. I watched him in the Democratic caucus when a year and a half ago in September, when a Democrats were standing up before what people called the bailout bill. And you know, I heard Democrats saying, it's the Republicans' fault and Paulson and we shouldn't. And he said, stop it. This nation's going under. I won't hear of it. I'm working with Paulson, and I need to go about the nation's business. You know what? In a time of crisis, 
people don't understand how fortunate we well, were to but, have that man who took on his own party to say, knock off that political rhetoric. But this is serious. here's the problem that we have with this. And, and, and I, again, you know, you, we're good at having a debate with you, and you know we respect you. You know I like this. Yeah, this right. is what the public needs more exposure and transparency with those they're going to elect. But here's the problem. If I go out and I start the war... And then I come back later on after the war got started. It's out of control. And I say, oh, by the way, I now want to stop the war. And like our inspector did after he no, voted for I'm Iraq using, and Afghanistan. Forget, forget our inspector now for, he doesn't want troops. Forget our <laughs> inspector for a moment. I, we could use that. But uh, here's my point. Barney Frank is one of the guys that got us into this housing crisis. Be, by relaxing the rules for people who didn't deserve to have homes at that particular time because they didn't qualify. Now he comes back and says, oh, by the way, we've all got to stand up now and be principled, and, and, and you're talking about that part. But forgetting the first part where he helped to get us into that. That is what a lot of people are seeing out here from a guy like Barney Frank, not a guy like Joe Sestak. I, I, listen, I respect the fact that you're saying you're independent and you're going up against the Washington establishment. Well, guess what? Part of the Washington establishment is named Barney Frank. Yes, but here's also something. I can sit in a complete vacuum, and you and I can just talk. Right. Or I can say, which Barney Frank said, everybody shares blame. President Clinton, President Bush, Greenspan. The Republican Party, the Democratic Party, for not taking care, like they should have, of having a referee on the football field for Wall Street, for mortgages, etc. And why I'm running overall is because there is not accountability in Washington, D.C. There's responsibility, but very few. But the like fact, all but the fact want to be that... accountable for what happened. So wait a moment. If everyone is to blame... At least I want to be aligned with those who have tried to fix it and stood forward and said, you know, we're all to blame. As he has said, we wouldn't do it like we should have. As I told you, he said, the lesson was we should never have had pro uh, the secondary market of mortgages combined with subsidies. I haven't heard anyone else say, oops, I want to tell you what we did wrong. And so that's the least of what I want to be well, aligned I guess, with, I guess what not I'm, somebody who blindly I guess went what into I'm Iraq. I guess what I'm saying is this. And All right. says it was wrong. I guess what I say is this. And, and, you know, I'm, not, I'm not dismissing what Arnold Specter has done. I'm not supporting him either. Uh, we don't support anybody here. But here's, here's but my point. there's a difference between him and, uh, and, well, and Barney Frank. Uh, uh, yeah, well, see, I'm, I'm not sure. Here, here's, here's the problem that you have. Let, let's, take, let's take what you just said. We now look at the whole Congress... And we look at the representatives, and we look at the senators, we say, all these people did all this stuff, and now we're going to put them back in? So you've been part of that. Yep. Okay? You've been part of that whole hypocrisy there, and now somehow you're saying, yeah, but I'm different from the rest of them. And then you go get a guy who's been part of that hypocrisy for a long time to go out and support you. And that's all I'm saying. I, you know, Listen, if you went out and said, I got this guy that's coming in to support me right now that has been principled the whole way through, who has been like me, fighting against all this kind of stuff, hasn't made those kinds of mistakes, has been doing things differently, we'd probably buy into it a little bit easier, and I think Pennsylvanians would too. I think you're going to find Pennsylvanians are not going to be terribly happy about this particular endorsement once it gets out to the general election, and, and hopefully you'll be one of the guys who will be running the general election against uh, whoever the Republican candidate is. Here's what I do know. After 31 years in the U.S. military and living, knowing that I wasn't responsible for the sailors under me, but right. I was accountable for them, I brought that into Congress three years ago. You know that I keep my district office open seven days a week I know you and do. have handled three times the amount of constituency cases, the day-to-day -day bread and butter of what a representative does than any other congressman across this nation. But now... I asked to get into the uh, run against Arlen Inspector by Democratic Party. The establishment closes a deal. And I didn't want to run it first because I have an eight-year-old daughter. But mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll do my duty. But now when I watched and studied what it, it occurred, and then they said, sit down. I said, no, no, wait a minute. You don't understand. I watched and learned Pennsylvania. We've grown at at a little less than 20% jobs since Ireland's been in office 30 years. The rest of the nation grew 50% mm -hmm. in the amount of jobs they've created. Pennsylvania is the third oldest nation because the youth aren't staying because the jobs aren't there. And now there's someone who's head of the Financial Service Committee, Barney Frank, that I have been working with in order to get initiatives in, like we spoke yesterday, of getting tax credits for small businesses put in because 
community banks aren't able to lend to small businesses, and you don't think that this is a gentleman who helped salvage our nation's economy, recognizing that he and others made errors in the past, as as I should have the day I got in, had more power to try to somehow stop what the damage did. We all shared it, but this is an individual who at least dealt with it with integrity and doesn't try to keep his job over doing well, good for the that'll, that'll remain That's to be the seen. difference that uh, the people I like to be aligned with. we got about a minute to go here. I want to get a call in very quickly. John and, and all this time I thought it was going to be in Afghanistan. I know. <laughs> I know. Us too. But there you go. <laughs> that happens with us. You know that. I, I <laughs> love this discussion with you guys. Thanks, what, Thank you, you need to we do appreciate more it. of this because people deserve yep. to hear us. Let's get John. Uh, right or wrong. Let's get John in very quickly. John, about 15 seconds. Go ahead. What I really would like to hear is the reality of Washington, D.C. My observation is the reality of Washington, D.C. is that the lobbyists write the bills and the politicians argue about it and vote whatever way the pot lobbyists want them to. Yeah. That's my personal feeling. Yeah. All right, you know, the best thing you can do, and I'm sponsor of a bill, is have public financing of campaigns. That is what causes a lot of the evil that happens in what you just spoke about. Because the special interest, well, you want to hear about children's hospitals, special interest, tell yeah. you why children's hospitals are helpful. But the money is what has to be changed to public financing, and then you begin to get people who will do more what's right for Pennsylvania and, and rather about, than white for yeah. keeping their job. You know, our inspector's taken, I think he's the second most uh, recipient of health care money, you know, across this nation, pharmaceuticals and all. And we'll I don't think that's healthy. That. We'll have to say it for another time because I promised to discipline myself today to make sure we didn't take you over this time. <laughs> so the door's always open for you. You know that. We'll get you it again soon, Congressman. We Thank appreciate you. Congress. At the end of the time. day, we, at least we know we each deal with each other with integrity and candidness. Thank you. That's right. And we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so you much, Congressman Sassett.